Hi, John here. In this video, we're going to look at a linear concentrator. It's a type of solar power station where we use the heat from the sun's rays to generate electricity. We're going to have a look at all of the main components within the system and we're going to explain to you how the whole thing works. So let's go to where we gather the sun's rays or focus the sun's rays and that would be our solar collector field. The solar collector field consists of a series of parabolic troughs and they're all in a line, that's why it gets the name linear. And these parabolic troughs focus the sun's rays onto a specific point. This point is called the receiver tube. We can see the receiver tube. Here is a connection to the main line. And here, and here. Those are the receiver tubes. And they are fixed in a position that allows the sun's rays from the parabolic trough to shine directly onto the receiver tube. The parabolic troughs themselves may be controlled remotely and this allows them to follow the arc of the sun as it travels through the sky and ensures that we are constantly gathering as much sunlight as possible and focusing it on our heat transfer fluid or our receiver tube. What you see now is a solar panel and the solar panel has a similar concept to the parabolic troughs as in it will follow the trajectory of the sun as it travels across the sky thus ensuring that we're gathering as much solar energy as possible throughout the entire day. The parabolic troughs themselves are about four millimeters thick. They consist of glass and a thin silver coating. Silver coating is on the back side of the mirror and this helps reflect the sun's rays onto the receiver tube. The receiver tube itself consists of glass and steel. It'll be glass on the outside then we will have an inner steel pipe, which is actually coated in a special coating to absorb more of the sun's rays. And then within that pipe, we will have the heat transfer fluid. The heat transfer fluid is gonna be thermal oil, or perhaps water, or molten salt, or CO2. It really depends upon the system. Although our collector field is quite small, it would not be unusual to have dozens of these mirrors all in a line and as the fluid passes through the tube it's going to gradually increase in temperature. Typical operational temperatures of the heat transfer fluid within the tube are going to be between 300 to 600 degrees celsius. The purpose of the collector field is simply to focus the sun's rays in order that we can generate heat or heat up the heat transfer fluid. Once we have this heat energy, our ultimate goal is to then convert it into electricity. Let's go further down the system, we can see how we do that. We can see we've got arrows here indicating the flow. What we've actually got is a molten salt storage tank. Typically, molten salt storage tanks would not be used in this manner. They would actually be used for heat storage. So let's just imagine for a moment this is a thermal oil tank, which is more likely. And that would come out here into the collector field and once it's been heated up it's going to go back we can say it's going to go to molten salt tank or more likely a thermal oil tank it's going to be stored in this silo and then it's going to come out and go along this pipe and it's going to go to a pump and from the pump we are then going to pump this hot transfer fluid to a heat exchanger or some form of steam generator. Once it's gone through the heat exchanger, we've transferred the heat to a different flow medium, which we'll talk about in a moment. And then it's gonna come out of the heat exchanger and it's gonna go back to what we can refer to as a cold storage tank. So we've given up the heat energy and then we'll send it into a cold storage tank here and then we will take it back out of the tank and send it back to our collector field again. And the cycle just repeats. If we have a quick look at the pump, the type of pump used here is a centrifugal pump that is probably not suitable for this application because of the very high temperatures, but you will have a pump within the system. So that is how we initially get the heat from the collector field. And that is our whole heat transfer circuit.
It could actually be even simpler than this. If we did not have these storage tanks, that would mean that we couldn't generate electricity or store heat when it's cloudy or dark. The reason that we have the tanks is so that we can generate electricity or keep an abundance of stored heat when it's cloudy or for in the night time. Maybe we want to keep generating for four hours or six hours in the night. And it's the heat storage capabilities of the plant that allow us to do that. As I've said before, molten salt is usually used for the heat storage. However, what we generally might have is thermal oil as a heat transfer fluid. And then we would have a molten salt tank which absorbs heat from the thermal oil. But it depends upon the system. With a temperature range of 400 to 600 degrees, it is possible that you could also have molten salt as your heat transfer fluid. If we go and have a look now at the next system, the next system is going to be a water steam circuit. We've already said that we've transferred the heat to a heat exchanger or a steam generator. Now what we're going to do, we're going to get water. You can see the arrow coming along here. The water's coming along. It's going to go again to a pump. And the water here is cold or relatively cold. And it's going to go to a heat exchanger. You can see the blue arrow into the heat exchanger or steam generator and it comes out the top here. Let's just zoom out. So we've got water going to the heat exchanger. When you heat up water, it turns to steam. Now once we've got steam, we go into our very traditional drivetrain. What I mean here is we take the steam, we send it off along the pipe here. The steam passes to a steam turbine. You can see the pipe running along here. It goes into our steam turbine. It's going to go in the HP or IP side, which is high pressure or intermediate pressure. And it's going to travel through the turbine and it's going to gradually, gradually give up that heat and kinetic energy. And it's going to cause our turbine to rotate. I'll just go inside the turbine house so you can actually get a better look. Okay, so there's the connection. And there is our turbine. And then the turbine connects on a common shaft with a generator. Normally, in fact, almost always, there will be a gearbox between the turbine and the generator. The generator is this section here. As the turbine rotates, we're going to rotate the gearbox and the generator, and we will start to generate electricity. Once the steam has done its work, we then need to get it back into the system as condensate or water. And in order to do that, we're going to have a cooling tower. The cooling tower here, it's going to pump cold cooling water in this direction along this pipe and into a condenser. The cold water in the condenser absorbs the heat from the waste steam. And as it absorbs the heat, the steam is going to condense. That's why we call it a condenser. And as the steam condenses, it's going to turn it into water or condensate. Once we've absorbed that heat, we're going to have to dispel it to air. This is then going to be waste heat. The reason we want to expel it to air is because we can't continue just to pump in a circle using our cooling water circuit. Because if we do, our cooling water circuit is gradually going to approach the same temperature as the waste steam or the steam within the condenser. So what we'll do is we will send the water along here. It's now slightly warmer because it's taken heat from the steam. And we're going to cool it down in our cooling tower. So we're going to expel that heat to air. And as we expel it to air, the cooling water is again going to be cooled down. And we're going to send the cooler or now relatively cold cooling water back to the condenser. And the process is going to continue. So let's back out here and let's just have a quick look from the top and we'll go through that again very quickly just to make sure that we've totally understood it. Water is coming along here from our condenser. It's going through a pump, through a steam generator or heat exchanger. It's turned to steam. We'll use the steam to drive the turbine. And then once the steam has done its work, it goes into the condenser. It's condensed back into water or condensate and it is pumped again back to the steam generator. So that is our water steam circuit. If we look the other way, 
in order to get the cooling effect that we require we're going to have a cooling tower it is going to pump cold or relatively cold cooling water into the condenser it's going to cause the steam to condense and then it's going to come out slightly warmer and we're going to have to get rid of that heat that we picked up in the condenser and we're going to have to dump it to air and that is what our cooling tower is doing so two separate circuits and they are running continuously exactly like a heat transfer fluid circuit which is also running continuously so now we've generated electricity from the generator we need to distribute it in order to distribute it we will have to pass it through a switch gear switch gear is like a large circuit breaker which we can use to switch on and off the electricity it's actually used for protecting the generator itself and the transformer etc because both of these components are incredibly expensive and they will take literally in excess of six months to manufacture so we'll have some form of protection in the form of switch gear then we will distribute the electricity to a transformer this is a conservator type electrical transformer and this type of transformer is always used for power stations the reason is that conservator type transformers are much better and more efficient for heavy loads and they're also able to deal with the high temperatures generated by all of that electrical current one of the design factors or the design limiting factors for a transformer is simply how quickly you can get the heat out of the transformer now this transformer is actually full of mineral oil and that mineral oil is going to absorb the heat that is generated when the transformer is in operation and it's going to send it to radiators on the side of the unit and we're going to distribute that heat to ambient air so that's how we keep our transformer cool the purpose of the transformer is to increase the voltage and reduce the current if we do this we reduce our losses when we distribute electricity into the grid and it also enables us to have smaller or thinner diameter electrical cables and if we're distributing electricity over hundreds of kilometers that is a big advantage we're then going to pass the electricity through what's called an open air switch shard that is this entire section here we're going to have current transformers voltage transformers loads of measuring devices protection devices and things like that we're also going to have some surge arresters so that if we get lightning strikes on the grid or for example on the pylon up here then we don't want all of that over current and over voltage etc coming down the lines here from the pylon and into our open air switch yard so we'll have a surge arrestor and that will deal with large over current and large over voltages essentially the open air switch yard gives us a way to separate the plant from the national grid and totally protect all of the machinery downstream such as the transformer and the generator etc so it's a very important piece of the system and to my mind open air switch yards and transformers are some of the most peculiar looking machinery items that you're going to see within the engineering world the voltage within the open air switch yard once we step it up using our transformer or once we increase the voltage is going to be several hundred thousand volts as a rough guide you're looking at anything between 110,000, 220,000, 380,000 or perhaps more it depends upon where you live and in which country the installation is installed so we've increased the voltage we've passed it through our open air switch yard and now we will send it to our electrical pylon here this is a high voltage electrical pylon and that is going to distribute the electricity to the national grid once we get to the national grid we're going to actually have something similar in reverse we're going to have a pylon which goes to an open air switch yard and a transformer and we're going to distribute it to things like industrial areas and residential areas etc so that is essentially how a linear concentrator works that is the whole system if you were to take the collector off here and replace it with a solar furnace the system would be the same we're essentially just using the sun's rays to generate heat and this heat is going to be absorbed by a heat transfer fluid so the system is the same linear concentrators are currently quite popular in terms of megawatt capacity linear concentrator thermal power stations 
are the most common type of solar thermal power station by far. In terms of solar to electric efficiency, you're looking at anything between 20 to 30 percent. If you like this video, please do share it on social media. And if you want to learn more about power stations, then check out the link in the description area where we've created a course that discusses a lot of the renewable and non-renewable power stations and exactly how they work. Thanks very much for your time.